What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Got a highly entertaining best two out of three duel for you guys to check out. We have a very strange and just kind of interesting build of Hieratics down here at the bottom. And it's going to be taking on pretty standard Orcus. Now, most of what you guys will see in the opening turn for the Hieratic player is just kind of standard stuff. You'll see it in combo decks used periodically, but it's going to end with a very different result from what you'll see. And and, uh, let's go ahead and roll it and you guys will know what I mean. I think he is going to go for Ovi Raptor. We've seen this play a bunch of times. Dump Ovi or summon Ovi Raptor and then you can send Carbageddon to the graveyard. It basically is a full combo in itself because it lets you go for Ib, the World Chalice Miko, and then you can just kind of like go into some Guard Dragon stuff. Thank goodness that Agrapane is banned and you can't really go as far as you used to be able to go. But, you know, Red Eyes is still in the game so you can do some pretty significant things but this is where it's going to look a little different well after the saryuja he actually needed to get the droll and lockbird because it's gonna be one of those type of cheese shenanigan type plays and he's gonna summon this very weird card number 63 shamanji soldier so this is a card that's very weird and this is very similar to the Trickstar Droll and Lock combo. This is a card that forces both players to draw a card. And obviously, that means that you can use Droll and Lock Bird after it. He has two of the cards he'll need. He actually just needs to get one more XC. And that will be the Artifact Durandal. So let's see if he can get a couple of level fives to hit the field. And usually the Heretics can facilitate that. He's actually going to tribute his own Heretic Link Monster to summon one of his Heretics from the deck. So yeah, he is going to go for that Artifact Durandal. And now the combo has been assembled guys this is this is like next level dirt man i absolutely love it so his opponent is going to draw and the second that he goes into the draw phase, this guy right here, the number 63 is going to activate. Both players are going to end up drawing a card. And now it's basically just GG no re because, well, I guess, I don't know, maybe his opponent could have had like an Ash Blossom that maybe could have stopped this. But he will then, because his opponent has drawn a card, draw and lock bird is live. Although he needs to make sure that he chains it in the proper order. You actually need to try to force your opponent uh, to act. Like you need to try to force your opponent uh, something that would basically wipe their entire hand then use draw and lock bird after that otherwise you'll end up messing up the combo it's the same exact thing as trickstar reincarnation so you chain durundle to the effect of your number 63 then you train draw and lock bird which will obviously resolve before that and it basically is just going to shuffle every single card in both players hands back into the deck and then <laughs> no cards are drawn and then check this cheese out he says cap i'm so good i got the draw for the next turn too bro now obviously with this turn with this uh, you know troll play you lose your entire hand as well but the difference between you and your opponent is you've got a freaking field you've got monsters that could actually attack your opponent doesn't have anything to play with and when he top decks his copy of uh, or his second copy of John Lockbird it means that his opponent ain't playing no Yu-Gi-Oh for the next turn either because he can just repeat the combo for another turn you can do the combo twice usually you don't really need to because you're going to probably win when you take six cards away from your opponent but just a little bit of icing on the cake just making sure that you have 100 so his opponent's gonna draw he's gonna shuffle the hands back he's gonna draw them and uh yeah his opponent gets to play no Yu-Gi-Oh. he just saw his i mean he got to see the cards in his hand so that was pretty much the full extent of him playing the game was seeing the cards that he did not get a chance to activate and obviously that is an easy gg now game two is going to be these same two decks running it back and Orcus say you know what anybody any luck sack scrub can easily win when they pull off a stupid cheese combo going first but how you like it when you gotta go second and I got the Nibiru because we we clearly saw he special summoned about a hundred times in the turn and Orcus he does have crescendo so like it's guaranteed he's going to open or he's gonna have that infernity barrier looks like he should have a combo here because he has harp horror he also has a foolish burial that can send I guess Orcus nightmare to the graveyard who knows what he'll do with it but he's actually gonna go for that bombardment <laughs> I don't know why he's even playing that crap, but hey, he's uh, I mean, he's going to he's going for the pop off. Anyways, he's going to go ahead and go for double Galatea. 
Dengirisu set the orchestrated crescendo and get his babble as well. He has the Dengirisu to back him up. Now, the thing about this is you have to be careful here because if you activate one of these Orcus effects, you will be locked into the dark attribute and you will not be able to summon Nimbiru. So that's something you got to think about. You got to generally go for the Nimbiru first. His opponent is going to just say, look, you only got one back row. I feel like I can push through it. He has the Heretic Sue, and I think that's, um, I probably would have just shotgunned. I think I would have tried to stop the king of tomb with my crescendo but i guess he felt comfortable because if you have then girisu or if you have the nibiru in hand i guess you can just let your opponent special summon as much as they want right at any time you just nibiru and stop them so that's what i thought he was maybe thinking anyways let's see what he's going to do he lets him go into some guard dragon plays. He says, Cap, I'm not concerned about his monsters. I've got Nimbiru, but I would have probably just used it on a tomb. He is trying to pop the face down uh, orchestrated crescendo, but he is protecting it with Dengirisu. He's actually going to uh, fire at it twice just to get the Dengirisu, I guess, used up. Nimbiru is going to be used here, and he's going to chain Galatea. So now the entire field will be wiped, and he will get a second copy of orchestrated climax or crescendo. Not sure why you'd need to, but... I mean, more power to you, I guess. Nimbiru's going to hit the field as well as an 11,000 attack token. I like it. Spicy. But his opponent says, Cap, I ain't afraid of no freaking Nimbiru. I'm going to keep on going. Now, at one point, I thought he was going to be screwed here because I was like, bro, now you can't use your Crescendo because you don't have, you know, an Orcus Link monster. But he says, no, not a problem, Cap. I'll just activate my Skeleton from the Graveyard. A monster reborn by Galatea, and now it's back online. So it looks like he's pretty good. His opponent is still trying to power through, and I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to. Looks like he is going to finally use a normal summon here, and he is going to use the crescendo. But look at this. He let him get too deep into his deck, and now he's going to hit him with that red reboot. I know this guy at the bottom is feeling a certain type of way. Is he actually going to lose through a crescendo and through a freaking Nimbiru? He gets the solemn strike out of his deck as well, but now he's done got Iv on the field and I mean I like it Iv's everywhere she's on this side of the field she's on the other side of the field can we get this chick more monster forms I mean we know she has another link monster coming out but I'm waiting for that Iv XC monster give it to me Konami he's gonna go for Borload Savage Dragon after FA Don Dragster Monster Reborn, the F.A. Don Dragster with the World Legacy Succession. And look at this. When he tries to use the Orcus Nightmare, which I feel like this was a major mistake because this is his last kind of interaction, his opponent's just going to shut it down with Savage Dragon, and I'm pretty sure he's going to lose this duel, despite the fact that he has three counter traps at three counter traps guys three counter trap sets but guess what he top decks the wonder one and i know it's not called wonder one i just call it that <laughs> he top decks the wand and uh he has absolutely nothing in his graveyard that he can actually use i i guess maybe it didn't matter because if he would have just used orcus like if he would have used the nightmare during this turn i guess no 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 it would oh my god i'm trolling it would have mattered because yeah if he had waited and used nightmare now and his opponent used savage dragon he could have used solemn strike oh my god God, he's trolling i was thinking i was like maybe it didn't even matter because he would have negated it but he had the solemn strike you damn troll you you 100 could have won this duel but you threw it away and obviously he has more than enough damage on board with just an Nibiru token alone to end up winning the game. And his opponent is, uh, I mean, he's pretty hes pretty salty because game one, he didn't get the play in Yu-Gi-Oh! Game two, he completely threw the game away after opening with Nibiru plus, uh, you know, Crescendo and having three counter traps on the field. But, uh, you know, them be the breaks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Anyways, let's uh, pause for one quick second and check out this Heretic deck. Okay, so this is what the deck looks like on paper. It's really interesting because it kind of feels like there are two decks inside of one deck. You have, obviously, like the Guard Dragons, and we've seen this with, like, Dragon Link, and how much uh, power that, like, the World Child Smiko really holds, and really how much you can get out of one normal summon of an Oviraptor. In this deck, it kind of helps you set up for a lot of your cheese plays. And it's interesting because the Guard Dragons in this build can give you negations, like, bro, out savage and stuff like that or you can just go for the cheese play where you uh you know kind of draw and lock and you shuffle all the cards into uh you know both players decks and then you're basically kind of playing against an opponent who really doesn't have any resources but you saw in the second duel if you're going second then the heretics can kind of be used to break boards because heretics used to be particularly good uh during the zexal era at going second mainly because uh you know like sue could pop back row and you 
you could tribute one of your erratic monsters, pop your opponent's back row, and still special summon a monster during the process. So like erratics are good at blowing things up, but then still summoning monsters at the same time. And we know how good the erratic link is, the heavenly, uh, the the celestial spears. Excuse me, heavenly. I knew it was heavenly. The heavenly spears. We know how strong this card is, and I think that um, Jordan Lockbird. It's kind of an undervalued card. I know people complain about like Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. People forget this card is kind of like a hard count of the Sky Strikers. If they engage, you can just, you know, use Droll and they're not going to be engaging anymore. They're not going to be adding any cards anymore. And you can also use this after Area Zero too. So that can just like shut down engages. Overall, this is pretty much like a, a fascinating deck where you can go first or you can actually go second while playing this. We saw that in both duels. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the duels if you did get a video a thumbs up thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos